Hi everyone, Lisa here, aka Maggie Milo, and I have a scrapbook process video to share with you today. And this is for the feather challenge that I'm doing with Sandra, who is O Snap Gonzo on YouTube. So go over to her channel and check it out because uh, she should have a uh, layout share with you at some point today um, to show her layout. And so, um, it was so much fun when we did our anchor challenge that we decided to do this feather one. And um, I'm really liking these challenges. It kind of gets your, you out of your um, comfort zone and it gets you kind of thinking outside of the box. And so I'm hoping Sandra and I can do um, more of these challenges. And um, I'm not sure how she feels, but I encourage people to play along. Uh, just because I think sometimes we need that little bit of a um, push past our creative comfort zone. Um, and then I think sometimes when you get pushed past that creative um, zone, you you start to um, kind of embrace certain um, different creativity. Uh, you can kind of um, get past a little bit of a, a, a Com like you have your comfort zone but you get past that creative block and you start to think um you know in, in different elements because for example for the anchor challenge um both Sandra and I live in a landlocked areas and we don't own boats and we don't go on cruises and stuff like that so we found it really hard to kind of incorporate um uh, the anchors into our everyday life and so that's kind of how this whole um, challenge thing between Sandra and I came along is I had kind of mentioned it in one of my videos um, that, you know, her and I should do an anchor challenge. And then we kind of started to communicate back and forth about doing that. So then after the anchor challenge was over, um, she had mentioned that uh, she was hoping that her and I could do a feather challenge because um, she was having issues uh, with using feathers in her layouts. And um, I've used feathers a couple times, but I do find that they are a little bit um, like an anchor. Um, sometimes you kind of take it to a more uh, relative term than a theoretical term. Because um, like an anchor to me, um, if you're thinking uh, in a a realistic way you're thinking boats you're thinking nautical sea etc but you're not thinking in a theoretical sense like um, anchors to um, be as a uh, support or um, to help people along or something like that so uh, I think when it comes to the feathers I think sometimes we have a more um, idealistic view of a feather being um, bird-like or, um, you know, something to write with, like a pen, uh, just something a little bit more uh, realistic. But if you get past that and get into the iconic term of it, you think light, airy, um, a dreamy, uh, that sort, sort of thing. So um, the feather challenge to me was very interesting. Um, it, I actually had kind of one of those um, moments, and I'll explain that in a little bit, but I had kind of an aha moment, I guess. So um, I was really glad, and, and this was all beforehand, Sandra had kind of asked if um, we wanted to do this. So we had set it up, and it, it took a little while for us to kind of get you know, um, together and, and kind of get a little, um, you know, our products together and our, and kind of get a due date and et cetera for it. So, um, that's why it kind of took so long for us to kind of get this together, but I'm glad we're doing it now. It was really a lot of fun. So you can kind of see, I have some products on the page and I have, um, strips of the pattern paper that I chose. And again, if you want to know the products that I've pulled, um, please go back to uh, the very first, um, it'll say uh, Feather Challenge Prep or Osnap oh Gonzo Feather Challenge Prep and it'll explain all of the, the products that I've chose so just in case I don't mention um, what they are, um, please refer back to that or if you have any questions just leave a comment below and I'll be glad to help you out. Um, so here you can kind of see I'm pulling in labels. 
and just kind of getting some clustering going on and I've got some feathers on the page and that brown strip has some uh, or that brown strip of paper has feathers on it and that was more or less um, the only feather type products that I had actually pulled um, so I think it's maybe a little easier to um, make a page if you don't have an overwhelmingly amount of um, iconic items you can just use them as a hint of something so that's why I only use a small brown strip of uh, that feather paper so my title is going to be feathers appear when angels are near and um, you can kind of see on that little um, piece of paper that I, I kind of do you know my stamping off on um, it's a close to my heart writing pad and what I had actually done is I Google searched feather titles and some of these are the ones that came up and I just wrote down the ones that I thought were interesting um, or that I could make a page out of and you could see in the first part of the video I had actually had a different picture in mind um, and I switched it out for another one um, in this one instance, um, I wanted to kind of explain, like when I had done uh, Amanda O'Banion's uh, blog post, I had mentioned that um, she asked what my scrapbooking process was, and I said, um, I'll pick one item that kind of speaks to me uh, and then branch off of that. And sometimes it's a photo, sometimes it's a piece of paper. Well, in the prep video, I showed what my inspiration was for my color palette. And then I kind of went off of that and that's why I could switch the picture out because the picture was not my focus uh, the paper was my focus so I could kind of switch it out and it wouldn't matter too much uh, what I would switch the paper or the picture out for so I just wanted to explain that so if you are interested in reading uh, that blog post um, I'll leave the link below, but I also did a uh, video, um, it's only like I think a 28 second video um, sharing uh, the link for that as well in case you, in case I forget to put that blog post or put that link down below. So again, I'm just kind of um, working on my uh, layering and clusters and stuff and so you can kind of see that I'm uh, working on my little clusters and putting the feathers on there and I have some gold elements but I'm gonna kind of remove most of the gold elements just because um, my title work is going to be in gold and uh, I don't want to overwhelm the page with gold. Gold is one of those things that you have to use in uh, small accent amounts otherwise it will get a little bit um, uh, a little bit too overwhelming. Um, to me, gold is one of those things where you just want little hints of it. Um, you don't want it all in your face. So you can kind of just see all I have right now for my title is feathers. Oh, and here I have some twine, and um, it's from close to my heart. I don't think I showed that in my prep video, but it's just the um, it's Baker's Twine from Close My Heart and there's a one package that has neutrals and then one package that has um, colors in it and this one is the one that had colors in it. I used to be a Close to My Heart uh, demonstrator but I am not anymore so I don't even know if that Baker's Twine is available but I have I have some of the Studio Calico um, color samples of Baker's Twine and there's some yellows um, in there that match exactly like the close to my heart stuff so um, you know if, if the close to my heart stuff is not available then the studio calico stuff is definitely still available so here I'm using these Prima letters to um, again work on my title uh, for that uh, feathers appear when angels are near and I'm gonna switch I'm just gonna kind of move things around so we're, I'm just more or less just laying out my title work and then kind of um, working off from that so this is definitely not how it's going to look in the end but uh, it's just a general idea to get my title down and um, I just was fussing to see here if I could get um, uh, that appear when um, in between that H kind of drops down like the the chipboard of that H drops down and I was trying to see if I could um, you know kind of space the lettering out around that H and it worked out pretty well 
And then I fuss with this title a lot and I really apologize in advance. So, um, and I do make a big boo-boo, but I'll kind of show you that in a second. And, um, just going, I'm going to pull these Prima stickers in as well uh, for the bottom part of the title, but they're just a little bit long. Um, they kind of get a, a little too far into where I want my journaling to be. So I don't end up using those ones in the end. And I'm basically scrap lifting myself. I did a page similar to this one uh, for National Scrapbook Day. There is no process video, but I did do a layout share for National Scrapbook Day. And so um, it's called 36, or sorry, Birthday Wishes. And um, I really liked that layout. I liked the design of it. I liked how I could do a lot of journaling on it. Um, so that is um, kind of where I scrap lifted myself for this. And so here is where I boo-boo. Um, I was trying to put the L um, to space out between those two letters. And instead of spelling out angels, I spelled angles. And it will go through the whole video. Um, like this so please ignore that part for right now um, when you see the pictures at the end it is fixed um, so for those people who um, are uh, OCD about that it'll be fixed at the end I promise you because <laughs> I did not realize I was doing this video really really late or sorry I was doing this layout really really late uh, and I I think sometimes when I scrapbook a little later, my brain gets a little lazy and I forget, um, you know, how to spell or how to do certain things. So I think, you know, I probably should have went to bed early this day. Uh, and the worst part is, is I did this layout over three days. Um, I did the bulk of it on day one and then on day two, I started working on it and my husband came up to me and asked me if I wanted to go out for coffee with him. So of course I said yes. So I only worked on it for maybe five, ten minutes, and then the next day I finished it. So it took me three days, not that it took me a long time to finish it. It just took me a long time to actually sit down and get it done. Um, so here you can kind of see uh, I have some Versamark out, and I'm going to ink up them in the Versamark ink, and then I'm going to put gold over top of it. And I'm just going to show you one feather, and then it'll be finished off. I just wanted to show you that I do it two times. Like I, I um, heat emboss it once, and then I'll stick it, stick it back in the powder, and then reheat it up again. So I thought maybe uh, people might like to see that. And I know it doesn't really show well on the video. Uh, just when I did it the first time, there wasn't a lot of um, powder on it so uh, if you heat it up again and of course because wood veneers heat up so much you don't even have to stick it back into the first mark ink um, it'll even if you let it cool off and you heat the wood veneer up again you can still get away with adding the glitter or sorry the oh there's the close-up sorry but because wood veneers heat, heat up so well um, even if you leave them and you went back to them and you heated them up again, you could still stick them back into the powder because the wood heats up so well. I don't know if I would do it with anything else, but the wood veneers do, you are able to do that. So here you can kind of see I am fussing around with um, the placement of, of the title and um, how I want those feathers to go in. The title is going to change quite a bit here, or like not really change, but um, get moved around a little bit. So here I'm just pulling off some of that gold because I realize it's getting a little bit congested with the gold for the title, so I just pull that off. And then these are some Studio Calico um, butterflies that I've had in my stash for a long time, and I explained that in the um, prep video. So I'm um, just trying to see where I'm at. And I apologize that this video is so long. I tried uh, to really cut it down, but uh, I had it at 45 minutes and down, now it's down to 31. So I didn't think that was too bad for editing. I edited it out almost 15 minutes. So um, it took a took a while, a, quite a while, but um, I did do quite a bit of journaling. And I always fast forward through my journaling because it takes me a long time. So um 
you know, if you ever want to uh, kind of see it, I can do it, but I just don't feel that it's necessary. But here I'm just layering some of these uh, butterflies together just to add a little bit more interest rather than just having them plain uh, butterflies. So um, just kind of monkeying around uh, with some of the um, clusters that are happening. And I started to um, think about maybe adding some more embellishments to this, but I was getting a little concerned that I might not have a ro enough room for um, journaling. So I'm going to actually um, start kind of like gluing certain things that I want down over on the right side of the photo because that's where all my journaling is going to go is actually on the right side. And here I'm just going to stick down um, that feathers and all my tile work and everything like that. And um, I was really glad that Sandra and I decided to do this. I think it's so inspiring to have um, little competitions with each other. And we just do it for fun. There's no prize or anything like that. I, I think it's the reward in itself. Um, so uh, I, I really like doing this with Sandra. And thank you, Sandra, for asking me to do this. I think it's so much fun. And I hope you and I can do more challenges in the future because it's been awesome. Um, I'm not sure what the next challenge will be next. <laughs> I'll have to come up with something. So uh, so I'm sorry for those of you who are OCD, but here is where I'm going to stick down these letters and they're going to be wrong. So I'm so sorry. I know it's driving me crazy and um, I'm the one that's doing the process video and I don't know why I didn't see this. And it took, like I said, it took me three days to make the video and all of a sudden, um, it was actually when I was starting to do editing that I noticed it was wrong. So it was almost when I was all done that I had to go back and finish it off. So I'm actually glad I don't do my pictures right away. <laughs> I actually wait and I do my pictures almost at the end of when I'm done uh, videoing. So I, I fixed that at the very, very end. And that little uh, blue piece uh, there at the bottom right says, remember you are loved. So uh, I should maybe explain what my journaling is about. And I honestly had one, and I explained this before, I had one of those aha moments. And when I was writing down the titles for what I wanted to write about, um, it says, and one of the titles that really grabbed my attention was, Feathers Appear When Angels Are Near. And it kind of really spoke to me. And the reason why is um, I had actually explained in Amanda O'Banion's um, guest scrapbook spot that I, I had the chance to be a part of um, that, you know, one of the more inspiring uh, ways that I got into scrapbooking, like I always kind of dabbled in it a little bit, but I never really took a personal take into it. Uh, but was when my dad had passed away and he was 53 years old and it was kind of one of those really big shocks to the system. And, um, you know, I, I don't get me wrong. I miss my dad. I love him. And I, and you know, if he's been gone for nine years now and I'm over the whole, uh, feeling sad part. Uh, now I feel glad that I spent as much time with him as I possibly could. Um, he was quiet, and I didn't know very much about him, but I, I'm glad I spent as much time as I could with him. But uh, when I went for my uh, checkup, oh, this was in February of 2013, and they told me that I, um, they recommended that I go for a hysterectomy, um, you know, that it was just better for uh, me to beat cancer, that, you know, I, I should go for this. And when I went in for the surgery, it was kind of one of those weird kind of comforting things. Um, my, all the surgeons and all of the doctors and all the nurses, and every time they come by you, they're asking if you're nervous. And, and even like people that I would know on the street, they kept asking me if I was nervous and I would say no. And I was almost, um, like a comforted calmness about me and I don't know I don't know how to explain it 
And it was kind of one of those things where I never understood why I was so calm about it. I was never, ever nervous about going for it. And then when I started to do this scrapbook page and this title spoke out to me and it says feathers appear when angels are near, it was almost like my dad speaking to me and saying, hey, I'm here, don't worry about it. And then all of a sudden it dawned on me that he was the reason why I was so calm through everything is because he was there beside me the whole time. Um, so honestly, um, I was doing my journaling and I had tears flooding down my face and it wasn't sad tears. It was comforting tears to know that, you know, through everything he's been beside me all this time. And like I said, it was kind of one of those aha moments and, uh, this page means so much to me because of it. And so that's, again, why I wanted to say thank you, Sandra, because it was just one of those amazing moments that, you know, it seems so small and insignificant, but it means so much. So, uh, yeah, it was a very enlightening experience. Uh and I know that's kind of silly to say about a scrapbook page, but it, it did. And I don't know if anybody else has had that kind of revelation moment, but um, I, I really did. Um, so anyway, um, back to the layout. That's my, that's my blah, blah, you know, crying moment, I guess. <laughs> uh, so here you can kind of see I've developed quite a few clusters and everything on here. And I had this weird spot underneath. Um, that <laughs> angles part of my title and I wanted to kind of fill it in so I took some of the hero arts um soft brown ink and I stamped up this little house just because um to me house means home home means family and because this layout was about my dad I kind of felt you know that he was at home with me so that that's the emph emphasis on the little house and then here, I take another one of those little stamps from the Amy Tan thing, and this one says love on it. And I stamped it up a couple times just because um, sometimes I don't get a great impression the first time. So I usually stamp it out three times and then just pick the best one out of the three. And then I just trimming around it, and I'm going to add it to top left cluster of the photo. But here I'm just going to kind of play around with it and see if I can add it somewhere else. So, um, yeah, and then here you can kind of see in the bottom there, I, I switched that um, little sticker over to the left side rather than the right side because my journaling did take up so much room. There was no possible way I could put it on the right side. So I just switched it over and I took a Maggie Holmes um, tag and I just kind of layered it underneath. And then this um, little rose piece, I don't know if I had mentioned that I thought I might use it, uh, but I actually didn't plan on using it. Um, this one was from the Farmhouse Collection from October Afternoon. It's from that 12 by 12 sticker sheet. And I just felt like I needed something up in that top right, or sorry, top left corner of the photo. Um, there was this weird little angle um, that was missing something. So the flower really added something else to it uh so here you can kind of see me playing with this little bird and getting him down i just thought birds and feathers go together and feathers and butterflies and birds should all go together so that's kind of why i brought in um the bird and i tried using this butterfly but there was already a lot of butterflies going on so uh, i actually don't end up using that and I'm going to, what am I doing now? Oh, I'm off screen a little bit, but I took um, another strip of sticker from the Maggie home sheet and I put it underneath um, that little uh, saying that says, remember you are loved. Um, you know, I, I just stuck it underneath there to kind of add a little bit of a border to that sticker. And I'm making everything up in, I think it's frayed burlap. Yeah, it's frayed burlap, and the reason why is I can't find my vintage photo. Um, I made a uh, summer scrapbooking 
uh, box and I take it outside with me to go scrapbooking and I think it's in there and um, that's probably shame on me I probably shouldn't do that because that's probably one of my favorite inks is vintage photo uh, but I'm using the brush corduroy for now and, and it's fine uh, it's just a little bit of a different tone of brown than um, the vintage photo but I guess that's that's the OCD in me maybe <laughs> and then um, here just fussing with the feather and um, I've got this green there's the blue and the green this to that um, adhesive and the green one is the lined like it's the solid adhesive I hate it but uh, I'm just trying to use it up I, I bought it a little while ago because I needed some adhesive and uh, it was $30 and it came with the blue and the green as well as two refills for the blue and two refills for the green pop dots and um, I think there was three packages of pop dots and then there was um, like the score pal tape and what else was in there oh the red line tape and I can't remember there was another roll of something I think it was just a wider width of the score pal tape and it was all 30 bucks so I thought it was a pretty good deal and I know I said you're not allowed to buy anything for um, the 50 projects Facebook page but they do a lot you uh, to go buy page protectors and um, you know adhesive and stuff like that stuff that you need to make a scrapbook page um, but they recommend that you try and use the stuff that you have in your supply so um, I did actually go out and buy um, this package of adhesive and I was just trying to find the refills but to find refills uh, for the dotted um, adhesive is almost impossible uh, where I live there's like n nobody carries anything anymore um, you know and I have to order it in from the states and it takes so long to get here um, so by chance I was walking through a scrapbooking store and they were trying to sell me this other brand of dot adhesive and I've tried it in uh, repositional adhesive before but I didn't like it so um, that's why I was kind of adamant that I wanted this brand and they had it but they only had it in um, a big big package but I figure it was kind of you know one of those things where uh, you know it's not that I'll never use it and it's not a uh, tan like it's not a piece of paper it's not an embellishment it's something that I need and will use on every layout so um, back to the layout anyway that's my little spiel so yes I did buy something but it was just adhesive and that's it so and then here I'm just going through these uh, brads and these are from I believe they're from the Follow your heart. Um, let me just grab them. Oh, they're stuck. Oh, I can't find them. I think they're from the Follow Your Heart uh, collection. Either that or they're from the Lost and Found 2 and 3. Or no, sorry, they're from the Lost and Found 2, I think, actually. Because um, they have like a pink version and then they have a blue version. Yeah, you can see on the label there, it says lost and found, but I think it's the second one. I don't think it's the first one. And so I'm just adding them um, to kind of each of the clusters. And the one on the bottom, and you'll see in the close-ups that it's got this kind of florally pink uh, print on it. And then the one that's over by the title has like a phonograph or phonograph, um, like the old style record player that has the funnel coming out of it. Uh, that one and then the the one in the top is just a blue sparkly uh, brad and here I'm taking my Amy Tangerine um, just this is the roller phrase stamp and then it says noteworthy and I'm stamping it in um, some Cup of Joe uh, Hero Arts ink and then I'm just stamping the date underneath that and what else do I have going on? Um, again, just kind of working on the clusters, and you can kind of see that I use some of those phrases from the My Mind's Eye Sweetest Thing in that orangish color. So I really like those. And then I think here I'm going to pull in some enamel dots. Well, not enamel dots, sorry. I pull in these Prima 
I think it's called Sade and Crystals. And I didn't show those in the prep video because I wasn't sure if I was going to use them or not. Uh, which I should have just showed them because um, who doesn't love enamel dots or uh, little crystals. So I just thought it would girl up the page a little bit just because it's just me on the page. I, it's not a great picture of me, but I just figured it would be a good picture to tell the story. And then I'm just putting um, Brad, or sorry, these little crystals on each one of those little butterflies just for added embellishment. And so here we're going to come in and we're going to take a look at the close-ups. And you can see lots of journaling. And you can see how sparkly those feathers get, you know, if I kind of flip the page the right way. But you can kind of see that um, it gets a little sparkly. And you can see that gold feather just kind of shining. And then you can see all the embellishment clusters. And then he, we're going to see the close-up pictures. And I just wanted to point out that I did fix the title. So here you can see I fixed the title and I added a little bit of stamping with hand pointing over to the journaling. So thanks for watching, everybody. Bye.